Hey guys, I'm Rowan, Tech Fusist, and I've been using the Poco XX Pro for about two weeks and here's how it went. Let's take a look. First up, let's start with the design. The frame of the Poco XX Pro is made of plastic and the front glass is covered by Gorilla Glass 5. Despite the material, the phone feels really good in the hand and it doesn't feel cheap or fragile. It seems sturdy and well balanced and I'm a massive fan of this beautiful yellow colour. Speaking of the yellow back, the rear panel features a leather-like material that adds to the premium feel. It's grippy, easy to hold and use with one hand and looks unlike any other device. It's also worth noting that thanks to the leather-like material, the back is also not prone to fingerprints, which is quite refreshing to see in a world where greasy fingers cover most phones. Moving over to the camera, the X6 Pro features a really good looking setup that provides a nice contrast between the black camera island and the yellow panel. The sensors indent quite a bit, so if you want to keep the phone scratch free, you'll likely want to use a case that was provided in the box. Other than that, the Poco X6 Pro ticks most boxes. It looks fantastic, especially in this yellow colour, and it's IP54 rated, meaning it can withstand splashes and dust. While other smartphones of this calibre are rated higher, it's good that Xiaomi still included at least some form of protection for peace of mind, but next time it'd be good to see the IP67 standard included instead for enhanced ingress protection. On the right side you'll find the volume rocker and a power button, nothing on the left side, and a speaker, microphone and a SIM card slot on the bottom. The top houses an IR blaster and another speaker. The optical fingerprint sensor is placed underneath the display and it's fast and reliable. Overall the Poco X6 Pro looks stunning, especially this yellow model. It has a great feel and while it's made of plastic, it feels really good in the hand thanks to the matte coating on the frame and the leather-like finish on the back. If you're looking for something new that stands out, this could be it. The Poco X6 Pro is powered by the MediaTek Dimensity 8300 Ultra, which is made on the 4 nanometer process, and it's powerful chip for more affordable devices. My review device arrived with 12 gigs of RAM and 512 gigs of storage, and the overall performance was but a smooth with minimal disruptions. The phone handled everything with ease, and it was a joy to multitask, play demanding games, and consume content. I have only experienced the device to throttle and slightly slow down after long playing sessions, and even then the phone remained only warm. It's fair to say that you can easily browse, use various social media apps, watch videos and play graphics intensive games without any major issues. The Poco X6 Pro will remain fully functional and operational even on the heavy loads, and while Xiaomi is known to offer dramatic optimizations in the background, I've never seen any of my apps mysteriously close, and the system handled everything as I expected. Overall, if you plan to play games, multitask and consume content, the Poco X6 Pro will handle it beautifully with ease. You're unlikely to come across any major issues during normal day-to-day -day operations and the only time you'll experience some minor slowdowns is after long playing sessions with more demanding games. Moving over to the display, the X6 Pro is equipped with a 6.67 inch AMOLED display with 120Hz refresh rate. The screen provides up to 1800 nits of peak brightness and Poco even managed to ship the device with Dolby Vision and HDR10+, which is often found on more premium smartphones. The bezels are small and thin and I appreciate Poco opting for a flat display that remained easily accessible during my use. This resulted in the entire device remaining easily usable with just one hand, despite the phone being on the larger side. The X6 Pro features a high resolution display with excellent viewing angles, great colour production and plenty of brightness. The device was always enjoyable and smooth when playing games and videos looked fantastic. Photos and videos popped and offered excellent vibrance and dynamic range and the overall experience with the screen has been great. And generally speaking, I'm quite happy with everything that Poker shipped with the X6 Pro. The phone sports Xiaomi's new HyperOS software that's based on Android 14. Poco says that both the X6 and the X6 Pro will receive three major Android and four years of security updates, making it an excellent device to consider at this price point. When it comes to the software, it might look familiar despite the revamped design and looks. If you used a Xiaomi or another Poco phone in recent years, you'll likely find your way around it and it'll look familiar. There's a control center and the overall look appears to be very similar to iOS with Xiaomi's own take on a few things. If you're a fan of a minimalistic approach, this is great. It's also great for those who might want to customise many other parts of the system, as Xiaomi makes sure the operating system remains personalizable and fully customizable. The only downside is that Poco appears to have removed the option to change the icons, and these can only be adjusted by changing the theme. Generally speaking, the system offers plenty of customizable options to make it yours, and it comes with a lot of pre-installed bloatware, which isn't too surprising from a Xiaomi product. 
That said, you can uninstall most of the pre-installed software except system apps. The general performance of the UI remained fast, smooth and responsive. I never experienced the phone to slow down and the animations were snappy and swift. Overall, the Poco XX Pro handled most everyday tasks perfectly and if you're looking for a device that remain updated for the next 3 years and packs a ton of features, the XX Pro is worth considering. The device packs a triple camera setup consisting of a 64 megapixel primary, an 8 megapixel ultra wide, and a 2 megapixel macro camera. While I would have preferred the telephoto instead of the gimmicky macro camera, Poco wanted to boast a triple camera array to look better next to the competition. When it comes to daylight photos, the primary camera delivers well balanced results. Most images turn out great with plenty of detail and good dynamic range. My only issue is that I often encountered a yellow hue over the images and the white balance appears to be off. Sometimes highlights get blown out too, but the software usually tries to correct it with acceptable results. And while the phone lacks a real telephoto sensor, the two times zoom feature provides ok looking images with decent colours, sharpness and contrast. The ultra wide does only ok and the dynamic range takes a massive hit. Colours are a bit dull and I often experience focus issues that resulted in blurry photos. Under good conditions, the ultra wide will produce usable results, but you'll most likely have to correct it in post and make some colour adjustments. In low light, the main camera takes decent photos with relatively low noise. The highlights are blown out a bit and I often saw lens flare from lamp posts and bright lights, but there's plenty of detail to make out objects with enough sharpness. The colours are decent too and there's not much I can complain about for a device at this price. The front facing camera takes, once again, decent selfies with enough detail, although the colours are a bit of a mixed bag. The skin colours are usually on point while the surroundings are slightly off. That's said, the camera takes good enough photos for socials and the dynamic range works well in bright and challenging scenarios. And if you're looking for a device that can capture decent looking photos in most lighting environments, the Poco XX Pro will do alright for the price. The XX Pro comes with a 5000 mAh battery that on paper promises a full day's worth of power and during my use I found that to be quite accurate. I could play games, multitask, watch videos and go about my day without any problems. The phone could easily last through a full workday and even when I used a bit more media the phone kept up just fine. The X6 Pro supports 67 watt fast wire charging and Poco says it can go from 0 to 100% in less than an hour in about 45 minutes. Once again I found this number to be quite reliable and accurate and I could keep the device stopped up in less than an hour. Like other fast charging devices, my habit of putting the phone on charger changed and I never worried about running out of juice as I knew I could easily hook it up and get charged within a reasonable time frame. Perhaps the only downside is that the Poco X6 Pro misses out on the option to charge wirelessly but this shouldn't be too surprising given the low price. Devices of this calibre usually lack this feature so I'll let it slide, still it'd be great to see in the future. So, here comes the main question, should you buy the Poco XX Pro? With its £370 price tag, it's easily one of the best mode ranges that money can buy right now. It competes against the likes of the Google Pixel 7a, Honor 90 and the Galaxy A54. The Poco XX Pro offers a good update timeline and the phone is fast and reliable. I haven't encountered any major issues and I was even able to play some more demanding games. The display looks beautiful both inside and outside and while the camera leaves a lot to be desired, it does a decent job overall. The XX Pro can last a full day on a single charge and it even supports fast wire charging and there's not much to dislike about this device. If you're looking for a phone that offers the fundamentals and a great overall experience, the Poco XX Pro is worth considering. However, if you're looking for the best camera phone or a device with better ingress protection, you might want to look elsewhere. And there you have it. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to my channel. With all that said, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.